In this video I'm going to be talking about a new addition to our host signals charts which is the composite model line or CML. The composite model line is a tool that was introduced to Sentient Trader software with version 4 of the software. It is not something that Hearst ever defined or spoke about. It is an invention of mine. It is a very useful way of visualizing the analysis that has been performed on your charts and understanding what the expectation is for future price action on the basis of that analysis. So let's take a look at this line. Uh, as always, before we do that, please make sure that you have read and understood these disclaimers. Here is a chart of the S&P 500. This is the three-month view, and that dashed orange colored line is the CML, this line over here. We delayed quite a long time before introducing the CML to the Hearst Signals charts because with Hearst Signals we try to, to remove the complexity from the process of trading with Hearst Cycles and uh, adding the CML of course adds an extra layer of complexity. But we've had a lot of requests for it recently. Many people have emailed us and said, please could you add the CML to our Hearst Signals charts? And so we've decided to do that because it does provide very useful additional information that you can use to help understand the trading opportunities that are being identified for you by the Hearst Signals system. But it is very important that you understand what the CML is because in some ways it's a very dangerous line. Why do I say it's dangerous? It's dangerous because when you have a line drawn on your chart like this, particularly a line which extends into the future, it's very easy to look at that line and say, okay, that's what's going to happen to price. I don't need to think anymore because I've got a line on my chart. Clearly, price is going to follow that line, particularly when you can look at the past CML, in other words, the, the line in the past period, and you can say, well, that CML has fairly accurately tracked the price movement. There have been some discrepancies, and we're going to speak about that in a moment. But it has fairly accurately tracked the price movement. Therefore, it's going to continue to accurately track the price movement or forecast the price movement. And that's not necessarily true. And that's why it's a dangerous line. Be careful that you don't get lulled into a false sense of security because of that line. So... Let's speak about the line and what it is. The composite model line is a line that is generated as a result of the cycle analysis that you see at the foot of your chart. That is really important. The troughs have been identified and they are positioned on your chart and that is the results of the cycle analysis. The composite model line is a matter of taking that analysis extracting the cycle information which includes the wavelength of each cycle and the amplitude of each cycle and then recombining that information to generate a false price action if you like which is the CML. There it is. In fact we should uh, speak about the CML in the in the past because that's what happens in the past. We'll speak about the future in a moment. But the CML line in the past is a combination of all the cycle information that we have as a result of this analysis at the foot of your chart. And so what the CML in the past is effectively telling us is that if only these cycles were influencing the price action, in other words, there was no other influence on price action, but only the cycles that you see at the foot of your chart were influencing the price action, then that orange line, the CML, is what price would have done. Okay, So where price doesn't perfectly match that CML, there has been, one would assume, some other influence on price action. Now there are of course many other influences on price action and uh, cycles are only one of the things that tend to influence price action, one of the most powerful things in my opinion, but um, where you see a discrepancy in the past between the CML and the price action, it does not mean that there has been an error or a mistake, it means that there were other influences on price over that period of time. 
It can, of course, also mean that the cycle analysis at the foot of the chart is incorrect. It has been uh, incorrectly analyzed or there have been mistakes in the analysis. And for that reason, the CML is not matching the price action at all. So when you first take a look at your chart, one of the things that you will now be able to do is see how closely the CML matches the price action. And there are a few comments to make about that. Uh, but the reason why you're looking at how closely the CML matches the price action is it gives you an idea of how closely the cycle analysis at the foot of your chart is actually matching the price action that happened. And therefore, it gives you an indication of how good the analysis is. The analysis process is very complicated, and sometimes you end up with an excellent analysis that um, doesn't need to be reconsidered for months. Uh, you know, the markets play out exactly as expected. Sometimes, however, an analysis is a lot more complicated, and it's very difficult to get it right. And so uh, this CML gives you a way of assessing the accuracy of the analysis at the moment. So uh, let's speak about this CML matching the price action. You will notice that during this period of time over here, the CML is raised right up above the price. Uh, what does that mean? Well, it means that the cycle action was leading us to expect higher prices. And something was depressing the prices. Okay, it was it was keeping the prices a little bit lower than the cycles would have had us uh, expect. That's the kind of thing that you will often see. Does that mean that the CML is not matching price action? It doesn't actually. All it means is that there were other influences that were slightly affecting the price action during that period of time. What is much more important is the direction of move of the CML during periods of time. And here you can see the CML was moving up in uh, late July and price was also moving up in late July. They peaked at pretty much exactly the same time. Then the CML was indicating price should move downwards. Indeed, price did move downwards over that period of time. Then the CML said price should be moving upwards and price did move upwards and so forth. This is going to get a little bit boring if I do every single leg, but uh, here you can see that the price action pretty much uh, followed what the CML was showing us. Although I must be very careful with the words that I use, because you must bear in mind that we're looking in the past now, and the software is using the information about the cycle analysis that it has to generate this line. Um, a question many people often ask about lines on charts. They will, they will ask, has this line been repainted or is this an indicator that repaints? Well, yes, it does, because every time we update the analysis, we have more cycle information. We have more accurate cycle information, and that information is applied to, ge to generate the CML. And so this indicator does repaint. It's not an indicator that uh, we place on the chart and then say, okay, we're, we're, we're not going to change that because as we get new cycle information, of course, we must change it. That's the purpose of the CML. So uh, as you can see, during this period of time, throughout July all the way up to uh, about the third week of August, the CML was matching price action uh, very closely. However, over here, you can see the CML expected price to move down into this 80-day cycle trough. And what happened, instead of price moving down, was it moved up for about a week, and then it did indeed move down. Okay, so there was about a week there where price was moving up, and the CML was having us expect price to move down. So what was happening during that period of time? Does that mean that um, you know our cycle information was entirely wrong? Not necessarily. It was simply indicating that there was something else that was uh, giving the markets a little bit of extra wind to carry it upwards, and it formed its peak um, ever so slightly late according to our cycle analysis. Uh, nevertheless, of course, we expected price to come down into this 80-day cycle trough at the foot of the chart, and price did come down into that 
trough. Since then, the CML has indicated that price should be moving up and then forming a peak and then moving downwards. And price has pretty much been doing that. So let's speak about a few other details of this. We're looking at the three-month chart here. So what cycles are included in the three-month chart? The cycles that are included in recomposing this price action are all cycles from the 20-day cycle and upwards. So the 10-day cycle and the 5-day cycles are not included in this price action, which is why we get a fairly smooth line at this kind of scale. So uh, this move down here, for instance, uh, that happened uh, just uh, two or three weeks ago, um, was a move down uh, probably largely motivated by the 10-day cycle and the 5-day cycle. Uh, so that move down is not shown in the CML at all because the 10-day cycle and 5-day cycle are not included in the composition of the CML line. So we're only seeing the 20-day cycle um, uh, influencing the CML over here at this point. Now let's speak about uh, what this line is telling us is going to happen in the future. We've spoken about the past. In the past you can use the line to give an idea of, of how well the analysis has matched the price action. And as indicated, apart from about a period of one week on this chart, the past CML has matched the price action very well, indicating that the chances are, are good, that this is a good analysis. So let's speak about the future. First of all, how is the CML generated in the future? The CML is generated into the future on the basis that the cycles will keep influencing the market with the same degree of strength, which is the amplitude of the cycle, and with the same wavelengths. Okay, When cycles have recently been very strong or very weak, or their wavelengths have been very stretched or very compressed, then in fact what the CML does is it assumes that the cycle will return to average values. So if a cycle has recently been very strong, it will assume that it will gradually, over the next three or four iterations of that cycle, return to its normal average level. Okay, And it takes that information and it continues to compose the line. So this line that we are seeing stretching into the future tells us that if the cycles keep beating with the same wavelength and the same amplitude, then this is what the uh, the cycles are expected to do to the market. So there are, are a few assumptions here. The first is that the wavelengths and amplitude will remain the same or return to average levels. And of course because of Hurst's principle of variation we know that we are going to encounter changes in the wavelength and the amplitude. And so uh, we can say uh, s s sort of straight out of the gates that this CML line going into the future is not going to be perfectly accurate because we know that the wavelengths are going to change and we know that the amplitude of the cycles uh, uh, is also going to change and so therefore that CML cannot be perfectly accurate. But it gives us an indication of what we can expect and again similar to considering the price action in the past what is important here is the direction of the move. So in other words we're expecting a downwards move up until about the middle of October which is of course when this 40 day cycle trough is expected. Then we're expecting an upwards move. Then we're expecting quite a big strong downwards move uh, right off the edge of the chart on the right hand side. Now here you can see price didn't match the CML level exactly in the past and price is not going to match the CML level exactly in the future. So price could be above the CML or it could drop below the CML. We don't know that. What we do know is that we are expecting price to move down and then price to move up and then price to move down. So the CML gives us an idea of the direction of the movement as we look ahead into the future. It's very important that you don't 
start reading targets of the CML because that is perhaps the least reliable aspect of the CML is in generating actual targets. So don't read your targets of the CML. You have a more powerful way of calculating targets, which uh, is, of course, the way in which price interacts with the FLD, uh, which is the FLD trading strategy that we're looking at here on our her signals charts. So uh, that is what the CML is useful for, is considering how accurate the analysis has been in the past and giving us an idea of what to expect as price moves into the future. Now let's take a look at our six-week view, which gives us a slightly more detailed view, of course, and it includes an extra cycle in the CML. So here we have the 10-day cycle included in the calculation of the CML. And so here you can see this price move down, which occurred uh, two weeks ago, uh, is in fact shown in the CML. All right, that's that CML coming down there. That's because the 10-day cycle was probably largely uh, moving price at that point. And so uh, that is included in the CML. So what can we say looking at the CML from here? Well, you can see the CML has actually tracked price action very accurately over the past almost a month or so, in fact, more than a month, because we can include that. So the CML on the six-week view has tracked the price action very closely, which tells us not that the CML was, was predicting that price at the time, remember, but it tells us that this analysis very closely matches the price action that happened. In other words, probably this is a good analysis. Okay, you can also see here the slight discrepancy where the CML was moving down and price was moving up. So at that period of time, there was something else influencing the price action that had nothing to do with the cycles that we see on these charts. That's uh, really all that is telling us. What are we expecting in the future? Well, we're expecting a little bit of sort of uh, wobbling around here at around about the level of the FLD. Then we're expecting price to move down into this 40-day cycle trough. Exactly the same expectation as we see on the three-month cycle, uh, the three-month chart. So uh, how can we use this uh, CML to refine the trading opportunities that our Her signal system is providing us with? Well, uh, if we take a look at the information at the top of the chart, you can see that the current price action is possibly a category D interaction because price has recently crossed down below the FLD. Now, that's a really difficult price cross down below the FLD, isn't it? Price sort of slipped down below the FLD over the weekend. Uh, it's something that you often see and uh, something to be uh, really a little careful of because you can um, you, you'll find price dropping down below the FLD and uh, you sort of miss the opportunity at which it crossed and so forth but that's uh, discussed in other videos so uh, price has crossed down below the FLD in a D category interaction so what are we expecting the CML is actually showing that it's expecting price to sort of uh, pretty much continue along this FLD but then it is definitely going to resolve down to the downside so the CML increases the chances that a peak has formed in the market and that we're looking at a good move down and so therefore our D category short trading opportunity is uh, probably a good one because it is supported by this analysis so what is the worst thing that can happen here? Well, the worst thing that can happen is that uh, price doesn't travel down very far before it forms a 40-day cycle trough. Uh, price needs to form a 40-day cycle trough, and it needs to move down a little to get there. So the worst thing that can happen is that it just doesn't go down very far. And if we take a look at our three-month uh, view, we can see that there have been 25 days since the 80-day cycle trough at the beginning of September. So the average 40-day cycle is 34 days long. So in about nine days time, we are expecting the 40-day cycle trough. So you can see how the information from the interaction with the FLD and the information from the composite model line are working together here to provide us with a stronger 
expectation the price is going to move down into that 40-day cycle trough. And that is the usefulness of the composite model line. That can be used to increase your confidence in a particular trade or to uh, you know, reduce your confidence and say, I don't think this is really a very good trade to be taking at the moment. Let's quickly take a look at a few other instruments and speak about a few of the details of the composite model line. First of all, let's take a look at the NASDAQ. Uh, the composite model line here is interesting because you can see how the composite model line was expecting a much stronger drop down into this 20-week cycle at the beginning of September. And here we have the same discrepancy occurring between the composite model line and the price action. Uh, you can see that, of course, price did move down into the 20-week cycle, but there was a period of about two weeks where the line and the price were moving uh, counter to each other. They were moving against each other. And so, again, that doesn't uh, indicate that there's a really big error or any kind of a mistake. It simply tells us that something else was giving the markets a little bit of an extra push, something that isn't included in the analysis on our charts. In other words, perhaps it was a longer cycle, perhaps it was an, an, a news event, perhaps um, you know something happened in the news which just caused for about a week the markets to, to give us an extra kick up higher than the CML led us to expect. Let's take a look at another example. Here's crude oil. This is the three-month view. And here you can see our CML has been tracking price action fairly closely. And um, you can see the CML was moving up during this period of time. And price of oil has risen a lot higher than the CML led us to expect. What is the CML telling us? The CML is telling us to expect price to turn down. Now, there is not really an anomaly between the CML, which is moving up at the moment, and the price action. But there is a little bit of a divergence, if you like, because price action has been much stronger than the CML led us to expect. Why might that be? Well, here we have a 20-week cycle trough. And you can see one of the reasons why the CML is projecting price to move downwards is because of the 18-month cycle. You can see the circle and whiskers over here, or the circle, uh, the whiskers, I should say, of the 18-month cycle. And so uh, price is expected to move down into this 80-day cycle trough. And there is the whisker for the 18-month cycle. So we're still looking at an 18-month cycle trough lying ahead. That is why the CML is projecting price to move downwards. This recent divergence between price and the CML, with price moving up so much more strongly than the CML would have had us expect, indicates that perhaps this trough over here was not a 20-week cycle trough, but it might even have been a bigger magnitude trough. And uh, it is possible, of course, that that might have been the 18-month cycle trough. If that was the 18-month cycle trough, it might explain why price has moved upwards so much more strongly. So that consideration might leave you feeling a little bit insecure. Um, how can I be saying that this 20-week cycle trough might be an 18-month cycle trough? Doesn't that make a big difference to to what we're doing in terms of trading? Well, here's the great thing you, which you probably already understand, but it doesn't really make a great difference in terms of trading the FLD trading strategy. The current trade or most recent interaction was a Category E trade as price crossed up above the FLD. That was uh, telling us to expect a long trading opportunity. And indeed, price has moved up and therefore fulfilled that expectation of providing us with a good long trading opportunity. Uh, so that opportunity was identified on the basis that this is a 20-week cycle trough. If that's a 40-week cycle trough or an 18-month cycle trough, we would have had the same opportunity. And so um, the identification of trading opportunities, although it is based upon the cycle analysis, when there are changes of magnitude of cycle, we still have the same opportunities, but the opportunities might be more impressive than we expected, or they might be a little less impressive than we initially expected. And so the difference here between the CML and price action is 
provided or explained, I should say, by the fact that we're expecting price to move down into this 18-month cycle trough. You might find this analysis changing soon because of the very strong price action recently, and you will see the CML adjusting. The important thing is not to trade the CML. Just because the CML is forming a peak pretty much now or this week, you know, you don't trade the CML. You use the CML to increase your confidence or reduce your confidence in the trading opportunities identified by the FLD trading strategy. Here is the three-month view of the Dow Jones Industrial Average, and you can see that we have a similar situation that we saw in the S&P 500, where the CML was providing us with the correct direction for price move, but price was a little less bullish than the CML would have had us expect. And so there are a few interesting comments to make about this particular chart over here. The one is that the CML always gives us very nice M-shaped cycles, okay? Because of course it's using cycle information and cycles when you combine them result in M-shaped moves. And so uh, you will see how the CML will often provide an idealized price movement, if you like. The important thing here is that According to the cycle information that we have, we expected a higher peak over here than the peak that is still lying ahead of us. And that's a really important thing to take note of because price achieved this peak over here, it achieved it a little bit, a little bit early perhaps, or you might say it achieved the peak a little bit late. Um, but the important thing is that price is now at a higher level than it was at the previous time and the CML is expecting a lower peak. So what does that mean? It means that something ha that is not included in the cycles on our chart has been uh, sort of propping this market up. Uh, I hesitate to use the word artificial but this, there's been some kind of other influence that has been keeping this market up and it's been keeping it it rising up. In, in any cycle, because we have an M shape from all cycles, there are two opportunities for price to form a peak. There is the first peak and there is the second peak. So the first peak is, according to our CML, already behind us and our second peak still lies ahead of us. So uh, you should pay particular attention to this peak that is about to form or potentially has just formed in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. So the CML provides us with some interesting information there to compare the levels of the peaks that have formed in the market. Speaking about peaks forming in the market, here is the Russell 2000. Now the CML here is indicating a bounce out of an 18-month cycle trough. We could debate that analysis, but let's not spend the time doing it here. So what, what is really important about this is that the CML was expecting a rise up to a peak over there. Then it was expecting pretty much a sort of a flat line to this 80-day cycle trough over here. And then it's expecting the market to rise up again. Now this is a very interesting situation and it's one that you must look out for on your charts because of several things. First of all, price did move up out of the 18-month cycle trough that formed at the end of July and it formed a peak. But can you see that that peak was early in terms of the CML? In fact, it was, let's see how much earlier it occurred. It was one, two, three four weeks early. So the CML was expecting a peak over here. The actual peak occurred over there. When a peak occurs early, you really need to be standing by because it indicates that something that we're unaware of, in other words, something not included in the cycle analysis, it could be longer cycles or it might be some other influence on the markets, but something has caused an early shift to bearishness. And uh, as you can see, let me just clear some of this because it's got a bit messy. So the CML was projecting upwards and then downwards. And as mentioned, this peak occurred early, about four weeks early. And price was expected to be sort of uh, de 
declining slowly, if you like, into this 80-day cycle trough. But what has actually happened? Price has started heading down fairly quickly into that 80-day cycle trough. So here we have a discrepancy between the CML and the price action. And the discrepancy is that price has turned down harder and earlier than expected. So that's a very, very bearish sign when you see an early peak and when you see price turning down when the CML is expecting it to you know, decline slowly and price is heading down quickly. It shows that there is extra bearishness in this market that our cycle analysis doesn't entirely account for. And so um, you, you, know, you need to be on your toes because this is a more bearish market than the cycles would have us expect. Again, the fact that there's a discrepancy between the CML and the price action doesn't negate the trading opportunities that have been presented by the FLD trading strategy. Here you can see that we are currently in an F category short trade. There's that F category interaction. So we are, according to the FLD trading strategy, currently in a down move. So that down move has turned out to be a lot more impressive than we expected on the basis of the composite model line. So there's a lot of extra bearishness that is not accounted for by the cycle analysis. And you can see here that the next interaction is expected to be a G category interaction. And so therefore a long trading opportunity is not recommended. But it, says, it suggests that you consider an early A category interaction. So given the market's increased bearishness over the cycle information provided by the CML, I would be less inclined to jump into an A category trade, uh, particularly if it's going to be an early A category trade, because the market is showing us that it is more bearish than the cycles would have us expect. I do hope that this video has helped you to understand the new CML tool that you have on your Hearst Signals chart. I do hope that you find the new tool very useful in terms of helping you to filter your trading opportunities and choose the better trading opportunities out of the ones that are identified from the interaction with the FLD. If you have any questions, please do email us. It's very important that you understand this tool and that you apply it correctly. And uh, let us know if there's anything else that I can do to help you to understand this tool better.